Hi, and welcome back to a guide to surviving stroke and brain injury. This time we're going to do number nine on our list. <coughs> Excuse me. It's called the ban basal ganglia stroke. So excuse me if I mess up. This is very hard for me to say. <laughs> so basal ganglia stroke is a rare type of stroke that can lead to unique long-term effects like emotional blunting or loss of sp spontaneous speech. You're about to learn the other potential long-term effects of a stroke in the basal ganglia. Fortunately, it's not all bad news because you'll also learn how recovery is possible and what steps you can take to improve outcomes. And your outcome can be positive. So the basal ganglia are a group of structures that lie deep within the brain. They are strongly connected with the cerebral cortex, thalamus, and brain stem. When a Ischemic stroke affects these deep areas of the brain is called a lacunar stroke. The basal ganglia are most associated with these functions. Emotion, vol voluntary muscle control, cognitive function, and procedural memory and learning. When the basal ganglia becomes damaged after stroke, it can impair any of these functions Fortunately, you can recover from a basal ganglia stroke by helping the brain rewire itself via neuroplasticity. You hear me talk about this all the time. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to recognize itself, re um, reorganize itself, create new pathways, and rearrange existing ones as a result of experience and rec uh, repetition. This means that the functions lost after a stroke can be restored, at least partially, if not fully. The brain can create new pathways in healthy areas of the brain to control the abilities lost after a stroke. For example, if a basal ganglia stroke patient lost her ability to co control her arm, Neuroplasticity allows new areas of the brain to take on arm function. It doesn't happen on its own, though. Neuroplasticity requires hard work through experience to occur. Fortunately, this is what a rehabilitation is for. During the stroke recovery process, stroke patients are exposed to intense Therapeutic experiences designed to encourage the brain to rewire itself and regain lost functions. Before we dig further into the rehabilitation process, let's look at the various effects that can occur after a stroke in the basal ganglia area. Then we'll provide steps for recovery, okay? So it's important to know that every stroke is different. I say this all the time too. So everyone will experience different secondary effects, and the recovery time will be different for everybody also. The following effects are not guaranteed to occur after a stroke, okay, and may not occur at all, hopefully not. Instead, this list provides a general overview of the potential aftermath of a basal ganglia stroke. Here are the most common side effects, long-term effects anyway. Motor impairments. One of the primary functions of the basal ganglia is voluntary muscle control. When this control is compromised, it can lead to difficulty in making coordinated body movements. Therefore, motor impairments are one of the most common long-term effects of a basal ganglia stroke. There are many types of motor impairments that can occur, like dystonia and chorea. If the stroke was severe, basal ganglia stroke can result in post-stroke paralysis. Your physical therapist will be able to diagnose your condition if you have any. Changes in sensation. Some people with basal ganglia stroke may experience numbness or difficulty feeling on the body parts affected by stroke. Without the ability to feel sensations throughout the body, 
It can make motor impairments even more difficult. The brain needs sensory input in order to make coordinated movements. The thalamus plays a large role in relaying sensory signals. In fact, numbness after stroke is one of the most common secondary effects of a thalamic stroke, which we just had a video on. Emotional blunting. One study found that disorders of the basal ganglia can alter your perception and experience of emotion. Specifically, basal ganglia stroke is associated with emotional blunting. Emotional blunting means that positive stimulus is perceived less positively and negative stimulus is perceived less negatively. This creates a flattened or blunted effect on emotion. Kind of like you don't care. <laughs> Post-stroke depression. While life after stroke may feel distressing sometimes, it can be perceived less negatively by a basal ganglia stroke survivor due to emotional blunting. If that's the case, why is post-stroke depression a common thing, right? To understand this phenomenon, try putting yourself in the shoes of a stroke survivor. If everything suddenly fell flat and you experienced less sadness and also less happiness, wouldn't that affect you? Every stroke is different, so everyone experiences different secondary effects. While not every basal ganglia stroke survivor experiences depression, it's common long-term effect. Number five, loss of spontaneous speech. In one study, a basal ganglia stroke survivor was reported to have slow verbal response time. He did not speak unless spoken to. However, when he did talk, his responses were fluent and appropriate. This indicates that a stroke in the basal ganglia may impair speech functions, particularly with voluntary speech. However, all strokes are different, so basal gang ganglia strokes effects will vary from patient to patient. Most speech difficulties after stroke are categorized under a condition called aphasia, which I have. There are many different types of aphasia, and a speech language pathologist can help diagnose your condition. So recovery. Let's finally talk about recovery, right? Most drug recovery treatments focus on activating neuroplasticity to encourage the brain to rewire itself. Neuroplasticity is activated by experience, especially the when the experience is repetitive and consistent. Just saying. With that said, here are some of the best therapies for basal ganglia stroke. Physical therapy. This helps restore movement in, in the body by practicing various stroke exercises that target the affected muscles. Ideally, patients should engage in daily physical therapy to provide the brain with enough stimulation for recovery. Gait training. This helps restore the ability to walk. Gait rehab focuses on exercises to strengthen and retrain the legs, feet, and core to improve balance. This is typically, typically done with physical therapy. Um, in case you're in between, I have videos from before that specifically help this. So if you want, look them up. Occupational therapy. This will help you regain independence in activities of daily living, such as dressing and using the bathroom. OT can also assist with arm strengthening and improving arm coordination. Sensory retraining therapy. This helps restore sensation in the body by practicing various sensory retraining exercises. It aims to re- Teach the brain how to interpret your senses again, including your sense of touch. In the last video, uh, I did the thalamus, and that's one of the one of the symptoms. And my example was 
somebody would put a hot towel on the affected arm and then a cold towel and tell you this is hot this is what cold feels so you retrain your brain by redoing that also I, I forgot to mention in the last video so you can also touch like for example a towel and someone could tell you it's soft it's plush it's wet it's dry whatever so you can retrain your brain into knowing exactly what it feels like should feel like and what it does feel like okay so the next on our list is speech therapy this helps restore speech by practicing various speech therapy exercises working with a speech language pathologist is ideal these experts can diagnose different types of language disorders and cater a regimen that meets your needs. Psychotherapy. This can help survivors cope with emotional changes. I had a hard time with this at first. Like emotional blunting or depression. It could take a series of sessions to experience changes. Positive psychology. I say this in every stroke video I, I think I've made. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies, not COVID. Um, this modality can help promote better emotional resting states by focusing on the positive. For example, it's recommended to write in a gratitude journey, journal every day to train the brain to rest in a more grateful state. Uh, unfortunately, I can't write, so I would type. I have sticky notes on my phone, and I have word on this, and I, I promise you I did it. And it definitely helped me think about what to be grateful for, which is very, very hard. And it still is hard, but it's getting easier to write down what I'm grateful for. So, people, normal people should do this. <laughs> the book Healing and Happiness After a Stroke dives deeper into positive psychology for stroke recovery. So, if you are able to read, or like me, I needed an audiobook since I can't read, there are several options for you. Remember that repetition is key to recovery. Key. Provide the brain, your brain, with repetitive stimulation that targets the area you want to improve. This aids the rewiring process to recover function. Like most types of stroke, basal ganglia stroke is possible to recover from, especially when a consistent rehabilitation plan is followed. By exposing the brain, to repetitive stimulus. You can help spark neuroplasticity to rewire the brain and regain lost function. Repetition is key again. I can't say it enough. Repetition is key. Even if recovery has slowed down or plateaued like mine has, the brain will respond to repetitive stimulation. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. I love that song. Good luck. And remember, celebrate every victory, big or small, and keep the faith and hope alive. Until next time.